Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm delighted as usual to greet you in the matchless and powerful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who alone is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God's name is worthy to be praised. TGIF, thank God it's Friday. Can you believe here we are at the Memorial Day weekend, almost at the end of the month of May. If you're still alive, it means that God has been good. Somebody give him praise, honor, and glory. Let me take this opportunity to wish all of you a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. If you drive, don't drink. If you drink, don't drive. Be safe. It's a wonderful time to have fellowship with your family and your friends. But also, Memorial Day is about remembering the freedom that is ours because we live in America. It's about remembering the brave soldiers who gave their lives that we might have the freedom that we have, and also to celebrate those that are serving even today in the military. And we know that the world is becoming a much more volatile place. Um, we have unrest in the Middle East, unrest in Ukraine, unrest in Africa, unrest in Africa, unrest even here on the shores of America. We need to pray for peace and we need to salute um, our armed forces, service men and women who give so much that we might have the freedom that we have. So let's not forget what the day is about. And then we need to give God praise, honor, and glory. Um, Paul says to the church at Galatia, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, for freedom, Christ has set us free. Do not become entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And so the freedom that we have, we must continue to hold on to it. I still want to encourage everybody to vote. Voting is in June, I think June 16th. Um, it's a local election for judges and county people and local officials, but make sure that you vote. Um, read the local newspapers, find out what's going on. Um, Bonhoeffer, the Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the noted theologian says that We've got to have the newspaper in one hand and the Bible in another. We've got to be informed. Paul writes to his son, Timothy, and says, study to show yourself approved unto God. Workmen that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then I want to invite you to join us for worship. I know it's a holiday weekend, but you know we're not long, and I promise not to keep you long this Sunday. I know it's a holiday weekend, but we need to gather together and give God praise, honor, and glory. So whatever you're doing, Put it on a slow heat. Make your way to church on Sunday. Worship is at starts at 1045. I mean, we don't cancel church because of a holiday. Holiday, by definition, means a holy day. It's a day that God has given us. You can step away for a bit and gather together and worship. Paul writes to the church, to the Hebrews, and says, Forget not the assembling of yourselves together, and so much more as you see the day approach. And I'm asking, I don't want this to be one of those Sundays where the church is empty because everybody is away. If you're in town, make your way to the household of worship. All right? I know that there are those who have still been at the Bedside Baptist Church because you've gotten comfortable. But the weather is beautiful outside. Get up. Get your life together. Come to the household of faith. I know that there are those who don't appreciate when the pastor speaks this way, but my job is to preach and to teach. Didn't Jesus say in Matthew 28, go ye therefore and teach all nations whatsoever I've commanded you, and lo, teach all, teach all nations whatsoever I've commanded you, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, and lo, and see, I'll be with you always, even unto the ends of the earth. I didn't get on to say that, but the spirit is just moving me. And so those are the things that I really just want to um, trumpet today. I don't want this to be a Sunday where the church is empty. The Bible says, come out from amongst them and be ye separate, says the Lord, and I'll be your God and ye will be my people. Well, let's go on to some notices and announcements. Um, we're getting ready for um, our White Rose Club's tea and fashion show. That's going to be the first Saturday in June. So it's the Saturday after this one. It's a wonderful time that we have together. Our tea and fashion show is not just tea, but we're going to feed you. We're going to have oxtails, rice, and peas. It's a wonderful time, wonderful fashion. You want to be here. Tickets are only $30. It's a fundraiser for the church, all the funds 
that are raised go to support the ministry here at the church. And tickets are only $30. If you don't know how to get a ticket, just call me here at the church. I'll see that you get one. Um, also, um, on Saturday, the 15th of June, the JAT Club, they are having a movie matinee. So it's going to be a wonderful film on a wing and a prayer. It's a faith-based drama. Um, the donation is only $15. And for that, um, you're going to get hot dogs, popcorn, french fries, drinks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, again, that club also is one that raises funds to help with the support of the ministry. It's getting more and more expensive to do ministry, but I am committed to spreading this gospel on earth in the hearts of men and women and boys and girls so that they will know who Jesus is. And then, of course, the third Sunday is Father's Day. Mary Magdalene, they have a remembrance booklet that they put together so you can honor a father who's alive or have a memory and a father who has transitioned. And you can see any member of um, that circle here at the church to make that happen. And I also try to figure out how to make that opportunity to happen for you online as well. All right, um, those are the notices and announcements. Um, finally, those persons who are traveling to Ghana with us, we're going to Ghana in July. If you're traveling to Ghana, I'd like to meet all of those persons going to Ghana on Sunday after the morning worship experience. All right, let's go quickly to the word. All right, you know, we, we concluded um, um, Acts chapter 2 um, yesterday, and the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, that this is how the church grew. Number one, it says that they were devoted to the apostles' teaching. And so number one, they were devoted to the word of God and to fellowship, to come together. It's what Paul calls koinonia, so important. I'm always delighted to see you. Thank those of you who joined us for Bible study. Those of you who gather whenever we have a gathering. And that's why it's so important if we're having something like a tea. Um, that you would come to a fashion show, be a part of that. Everything is Christocentric. If we're having a father and son's breakfast, you want to be there. The fellowship is important. The Bible says um, the, the apostles teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread, eating together and remembering the Holy Communion and to prayer. Uh, prayer changes things. The prayers of a righteous avail of much. The Bible says they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved because they did these four things, because they devoted themselves to the apostle teachings, because they were involved in fellowshipping with one another and in the breaking of bread and in prayer, those four things. I'm gonna talk about this on Sunday. Sunday is Trinity Sunday, where we acknowledge the mystery of the gospel. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The Bible says they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people and the Lord. Not they, but because they did what God had commanded, the Lord added to their numbers daily those who are being saved. Let's take a quick look at chapter three now. Now we see the church is on the move. We've gone through Ascension Sunday. Jesus ascended into heaven. We have celebrated Pentecost Sunday, and this Sunday will be Trinity Sunday. But now we're in chapter three. Here it is. Because they were devoted to the apostle creed and to the teachings of the apostles, and because the apostles themselves went to the temple the Bible says um, they went to the temple to praise God and to pray. Here it is, um, Acts chapter 3, verse 1. One day, Peter and John were going to the temple at the time of prayer. At 3 in the afternoon, they prayed several times a day. They prayed at noon. Every three hours, they prayed. They prayed at 3. They prayed at six, they prayed at nine, they prayed at 12. Now a man 
who was lame from birth and being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg for money from those going into the temple courts. Only knew one way to get blessed, and that was just to beg for it. And they bought him, sent him by the gate, because people were going into the temple. And he begged for money, right? When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. The King James says he asked them for arms, he asked them for money. Like we go into, um, I don't know, um, Popeye's Chicken, um, Burger King, in the bank. There's always someone begging for money. And so they were asking for money. The Bible says, and we saw Peter and John about to enter. He asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. The Bible says, and then Peter said, look on us. Stop looking for money to be in your cup, but look on us. Maybe worship God in such a way that we could say to people, look on us. They'll see something different about us because we have spent time with God. The man gave them their attention, his attention, expecting to get something. Then Peter said, because God can still work miracles. God can still make a way out of nowhere. I'm almost done. Peter said, silver and gold, I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. There's power in the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee has got to bow and every tongue has got to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all to the glory of God the Father. Taking him by the right hand, they helped him up and instantly, King James says, and immediately the man's feet and ankles became strong. He had not walked, but God began to strengthen his feet and his ankles so that he jumped to his feet and began to walk. What was carrying him, he's now able to carry. He's not able to get up from where he is. And I'm saying to somebody right now who's been at the Bedside Baptist Church, it's time for you to get up and walk. Somebody who is just sitting there being depressed, get up and go outside and breathe and declare with David, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Join in with the psalmist who says, I'll lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. And the Bible says, then he went into the temple court walking and jumping and praising God. When God blesses, you ought to give him the praise, the honor, and the glory. Uh, one of our seniors came today and um, she was outside. She couldn't walk, but it was my joy to go out and to greet her and to let her know that God is good. I mean, if you can do something, then just get up and do it. She couldn't come to me, so I went to her. I'm going to leave after this call to go visit some people that are sick. Sometimes God has blessed you to be a blessing. I'm almost done. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple court called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened. My prayer is that God will allow something amazing to happen to us, for us, and through us during this holiday weekend. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, let me greet some of you who have joined me. Thank you so much for being here today. We're done. I'm going to let you go. Um, Natalie Crawford, always good to see you. Sister Ruby Ramsey, we talked earlier. I'm going to visit you in just a little while. Joan, how are you? Deborah Dunham. How are you continuously praying for you, Sister Phyllis Laria, Sister Virginia Chainer, Sister Thelma Phillips? You know, I, I'm feeling very good today. I, I tell you, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Leroy, how are you? Marva Harding, Richard Fagan, how are you? Aris Gaddis Hazel, Carmen. Don't know what happened to my ankle this morning, but it's feeling better now. We'll run next week. That's my running partner. Florence Farrell, how are you? Brenda Lee, how are you? Um, Sister Anna Mid, praying for you. Imogene Brown, how are you? God bless you. God bless you. Gloria Park and Clark, good to see you. Good to see each and every one. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks and we pray now that you'd bless each person in the sound of my voice. Pray for those that are sick and shut in. Send to the church and say, pray for me. We pray for Deacon Joseph Reeves 
who is in a rehabilitation facility that you would touch his body. We pray for Sister Denise Clark. Thank you for how you healed her and brought her through. Continue to touch her body. We pray for Sister Ruby Ramsey. We pray for Sister Francis Randolph. We pray for Brother Deacon John Dowling others whose names I cannot call, but oh God, we know you still got healing, more healing than Henry Garber than all the hospitals and all the lab. Pray that even now you would touch, heal, and deliver in the name of Jesus. And now God, we thank you for your word that's so pregnant with truth and power that gives birth as we yet try to understand it. Help us, oh God, like this man who was begging for arms to take our eyes off of material things and put our eyes on you. Join in with the psalmist who says, I lift up my eyes to the hills and what cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. We thank you now. We praise you. We honor you and we give you glory. Hear our prayer now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed our time together. Um, tomorrow, of course, is a holiday. Be safe. Join us for worship on Sunday. I can't stress it enough. Let's make the devil mad. Come to church. Give God praise. And you're going to have a better cookout if you put God first. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Whatsoever else you need, the Lord will add it unto you. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance. May he grant you his peace and his love. And you're going in and you're going out. And you're down sitting and you're uprising until we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Shalom.